Are you looking for ways to make your quilt piecing more efficient and more accurate? I'd love to suggest that you try chain piecing. My name is Holly Ann Knight of String and & Story, and it's my job to guide you to sew and quilt with confidence. And today, I'm going to introduce you to this simple but effective technique for piecing your quilts more quickly and more efficiently. Plus, it's pretty darn fun. Okay, let's get started. Like the name suggests, chain piecing means that we are gonna feed several pieces through the machine in a row so that they are connected like a long chain. Now, if you are new to quilt piecing, you may have thought that you needed to put one piece under, sew, and then break thread. But in fact, we can just keep going and wait and cut our threads later. Here I'm making some triangle in a square or tri-rex units. I went ahead and pinned all four of these so we don't have to pause and pin while we're sewing together. But you could pin as you go if you're doing this at home. Now here as I reach the end of the unit, if I stop and I cut my thread, um, then I'm gonna have just units kind of floating about and it's an extra step to either pull the piece out and cut the threads or use the cutter on the machine. Instead, I'm gonna leave that piece there and simply begin to feed the next piece in behind it. Now, I wanna make sure that these don't actually overlap. I don't wanna sew them together, but they can go right up against each other. And as you can already see here at the back of the machine, they stay connected by a little twist of threads, like so. And I'm gonna continue doing this for all four Tri-Rex units. Those few seconds that it takes to cut the threads, to move the piece out of the way, and then to start fresh and having to make sure that we don't catch those thread tails, all those little seconds add up a lot, especially if you're piecing a whole quilt. Plus, then it's a lot easier to lose units and have them about your sewing room and not know exactly where they ended up. Now, I've reached the end of my fourth tri rack, so at this point, I will cut my thread. And you'll see that I have this lovely little chain of units. Now, this is just one block's worth of the Dogwood Blossoms quilt that I'm making, but I'm making 16 blocks for this quilt. So I could, in theory, stack up all 16 blocks worth of tri racks and feed them all through one after the other and have a much, much longer chain. But that would take a lot longer to show y'all. Once I have my chain and I need to press these Rex units open, I need to actually separate them at this point. Now, I could floss them through the side of my machine, but I find that I end up having to fiddle with that a lot. So I really love to use my Sunflower Quilt Thread Cutter, and I simply set that next to my machine and floss these apart. If you have little people hanging around your sewing room, this is a great job for them that they can do even when they're really, really young. And then I'm gonna press each one of these units so that that Rex unit is open and we'll be ready to add the next one. That funky little angle for my ironing mat over here, but it's gonna get the job done. Once those are pressed, I can start lining up the second side of my tri rex and feed them through in the same way. And just like I mentioned before, you don't have to pin or line up each one ahead of time. You can just do it as you go. And you'll still get those nice time-saving benefits of feeding one thing through after another. As an aside, notice how careful I'm being handling the edges of these Tri-Rex units. These are a unit that have lots of bias edges, so you want to be really gentle when you're handling them to make sure that you don't stretch anything out of line. 
Now I'm gonna finish piecing these last two through just the same as before and then press those open. And just like that, we will have used chain piecing to make this step of our quilt making that much more efficient and easy to keep track of where we are in our quilting process. Thank you for joining me for this introduction to chain piecing. I hope that it has shed a little bit of light on a way that you can make your piecing process a little easier and more efficient. Be sure to hit like and subscribe and check out more resources in the caption below.